Welcome to Far East Wargaming, bringing you another Horus Heresy Battle Report. And this week we've got a 3,000 point game in 30 minutes. And I'll be playing the Loyalist Empress Children. And Jason, who are you bring? First time on the channel, we have the World Eaters. They're finally ready for their yeah. debut on the channel. And it actually fits really well because we're trying to recreate Ispawn 3. So I've got yeah. the Traitorous World Eaters. They've made landfall. They're going after the Loyalists. Angron wants some people's heads. So yeah, let's see what happens. First time on the channel for them. Yeah, we've gone two very infantry heavy lists to really try and replicate that. Yep. We are planning on doing an Isvan campaign later on in the year. And this is just a precursor for us to get our head around how we could go about doing that. So yep. I do hope you'll enjoy this. We'll be bringing you the army showcases next and we'll probably see you in the end of the battle. Here we have 3,000 points of Loyalist Empress Children running No Right of War. This force is led by a Praetor as Warlord with the Martyrs of Isvan Warlord trait. He is equipped with a Master Crafted Paragon Blade and a Thunder Hammer. For the Warlord's retinue, we have a five strong Phoenix Terminator squad with an upgraded Phoenix Terminator Standard Bearer. For the second HQ, we have a Champion Centurion with a Paragon Blade and Artificer Armor. For the third HQ, we have a standard Master of Signals with no significant upgrades. Kicking off the Elites, we have Rylanor the Unyielding with his standard loadout of Kerry's Assault Cannon and Gravis Power Fist and Heavy Flamer. Behind him is also a two strong Contemptor Dreadnought Talon. Both have Gravis Power Fists with Combi Bolters and have been upgraded with Gravis Melter Cannons. For the third Elite's Choice, we have a 10 man Palantine Blade squad. The Sergeant and four of the Palantine Blades have been upgraded with Phoenix Spears. The rest have been upgraded with Phoenix Rapiers. Rounding off the elites, we have three Apothecaries. These have all been upgraded with Artificer Armor. For troops, we have three 10-man tactical squads. All have been upgraded with Legion Vexillas and Artificer Armor on the Sergeants. Two of the Sergeants have been upgraded with Power Fists and one of the Sergeants has been upgraded with a Chainsword. For the fourth troop slot, we have a 10-man tactical support squad and they have all been upgraded with Plasma Guns and the Sergeant has been upgraded with Artificer Armor. For fast attack, we have two Javelins in a squadron. They are both using Laz Cannon Sponsons and also have been upgraded with Pintle Mounted Multi Melters. The second fast attack is a five man Sky Hunter Squadron. The Sergeant has been upgraded with Artificer Armor, and this entire squad is wielding multi melters in their bikes. Rounding off this force, we have a 10 man heavy support squad. They have all been upgraded with missile launchers with frag, crack, and flak missiles. And the sergeant has been upgraded with artificer armor. This rounds off 3,000 points of Loyalist Emperor's Children. Here we have 3,000 points of Traitor World Eaters running the Berserker Assault Rite of War. The Warlord for this force is a Legion Cataphracti Praetor wielding a Thunderhammer 
and a combi Volkite charger and using the Blood Hunger Warlord trait. He is accompanied by a Cataphracti Command Squad Retinue. Three have been upgraded with Thunder Hammers and Combi Bolters. One of the Chosen has been upgraded with a Chain Fist and the Standard Bearer is using a Thunder Hammer. For Elites, we start with a two strong Contemptor Dreadnought Talon. One of the Contemptors is using two Gravis Laz Cannons. The other Contemptor is dual wielding Gravis Power Fists with inbuilt Graviton Guns. The second Elite's choice is a 10 man Red Hand Destroyer Assault Squad. The Sergeant is wearing Artificer armor and wielding a Thunder Hammer. Two of the Ravagers have been upgraded with missile launchers on Suspensor Web with Rad missiles. The third Elite's Choice is a two-man Apothecarian Detachment. One of the Apothecaries has been upgraded with a Warhawk Jump Pack. For troops, we start with a 20-man Assault Squad. The Assault Sergeant has been upgraded with Artificer Armor and Power Fist. One of the Legionnaires has been upgraded with a Power Sword. The rest are using Chain Axes. Next, we have a 20-man Despoiler Squad. The Sergeant has been upgraded with Artificer Armor and Power Fist. They have also upgraded one of the Despoilers with a Legion Vexilla. All are wielding Chain Axes. The third troop slot is a 16-man Despoiler Squad. The Sergeant has been upgraded with Artificer Armor and a Power Fist. And one of the Despoilers has been upgraded to a Legion Vexilla. All of the Despoilers are wielding Chain Axes. The final troop slot is a five-man reconnaissance squad. The entire squad has been upgraded with Nemesis Bolters and one of the Recon Legionnaires has been upgraded with an Augury Scanner. For fast attack, we have a five-man Skyhunter squadron. Four of the Skyhunters, including the Sergeant, have been upgraded with Volkite Coverins. One has a heavy bolter. The Skyhunter Sergeant also is wearing Artificer armor. For heavy support, we start with a 10-man heavy support squad. All have been upgraded with Volkite culverins. The Sergeant is wearing Artificer armor. One of the Legionnaires has been upgraded with an Augury scanner and the final Legionnaire has been upgraded with a Legion Vexilla. The final unit for this force is a Land Raider Spartan with two Laz Cannon Arrays, a Flare Shield and a front mounted twin linked Bolter and Searchlights. This rounds up 3000 points of Traitor World Eaters running the Berserker Assault Right of War. Here is the terrain for today's onslaught fight. We're trying to replicate a version of Isvan 3 and we have Dawn of War deployment. As you can see, we have filled up the center of the terrain to be key zones to get by and probably have a lot of fighting with. We'll be up with the deployment next. The Empress Children won the roll-off and elected to deploy first and go first. 
we did follow the onslaught deployment, but we're just going to give you a summary of what we've got here. On my left flank, I have my Sky Hunter Squadron with multi melters. They are next to Rylanor, who is taking up the middle of my left hand flank. And just behind him is my Praetor and Phoenix Terminator squad. Next to that is the Javelins with Las Cannons and Multi Melter. And behind them is a 10 man tactical squad. Taking up the center of my board, I have a 10 man tactical support squad with plasma guns, as well as my 10 man Palantine Blade squad with the Champion and Apothecary with them. Also, backing up the center of the field is my two strong Contemptor Talon. They have the Gravis Melter gun and also Combi Bolters in the fists. On my right hand flank is a 10 man tactical support squad, which is actually on top of the onslaught objective that Jason has placed here, as well as a 10 man missile launcher squad who are accompanied by a master of signals and an apothecary, just to give them a bit of longevity. And finally, on the far right is another 10 man tactical squad. They are holding my right flank and they were a bit of a distraction during the deployment phase. And for the World Eaters deployment, uh, you have a lot of infantry when you play World Eaters and it's not always easy to put them down, but I think we've found a kind of a solution here. So starting on my left flank, I have the 10-man Volkite squad in this ruin, taking advantage of the cover. They're probably going to get shot on turn one, but that's less stuff shooting at my other stuff, so that's okay. Hiding behind this container is the Red Hand Destroyer squad, ready to pop out and uh, go up the field. We've got the Contemptor Talon here. They might as well stand out in the open because there's actually not much that can hurt them where they're at right now, with the exception of maybe some missile launchers. Hiding in the building here is where we put the infiltrating recon squad, positioned to stay out of line of sight of the missile launchers, but they have complete line of sight down towards the Emperor's Children left flank. Behind the building, we've got a big, massive scrum here. So we've got the 21-man despoiler squad, including the apothecary, kind of hiding here in, uh, behind the building. We've got the Spartan with the command squad and the Praetor, ready to go either left or right as necessary. We've got the 21-man Assault Squad Blob, including Apothecary, that is also kind of hugging the cover and staying out of line of sight of the missile launchers. Backing them up, we've got the Sky Hunter Jet Bikes. Uh, they can't claim cover, so but they're in a position where not a lot of stuff can draw a line of sight on them, which is okay. And finally on my right flank is 16-man Despo Despoiler Squad, also sitting on top of Rich's Onslaught Objective Marker. They're probably going to take some heat in the first turn, but that's perfectly okay, because again, that's other stuff that's not shooting at my bigger blobs. That is it for the World Eaters, and hopefully we'll be coming back with a Seize the Initiative role. So now we have the obligatory fist bump. Good game. Good game, sir. And also it's going to be the Seize the Initiative role. Brand new army, first time on the channel, new dice. Of course, I'm going to roll a one. So let's see what happens. Yep, it's a one, just <laughs> as predicted. So we'll be coming back with Emperor's Children, turn one. Turn one for the Empress Children and in the movement phase, we have been slightly pacifist to be honest. On our left hand flank, the Sky Hunter Squadron has just inched forward to be in range of their melter guns on the Despoiler Squad over here. We want to try and whittle a few of these down. Rylanor and the Palantine Blades, sorry, the Phoenix Terminators with the Praetor have run into the building. Some of the Command Squad Phoenix Terminators are inside, some are outside. We've been a bit more aggressive with our Javelins here. Might be a mistake for later, but we kind of did want to either have some options for the Spartan here, or actually these pesky uh, Scouts. I really don't like Recon Squads, and so they kind of tend to be a priority for me, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to my chagrin. Yeah. But there is a Jump Pack Squad here, which could very well damage us in the future. We've moved our plasma guns inside the building to get some cover and just run our Phoenix, sorry, uh, Palantine Blades, I'm getting these two wrong now, um, onto the right hand side because the objective is over here so we do need to protect it. 
the two Contemptors have got into shooting range of the enemy Contemptors just to get off their melter guns there. We did not move any of the missile launchers, but we did move both of the tactical squads into cover. The one that was originally on the onslaught objective is fully in cover, and the one furthest on our right flank has moved back. We are going to play the objectives in this game and protect the onslaught. Also, just for posterity's sake, we are playing everything is moving three inches up for all terrains, regardless of the height per level. And we also are blocking all line of sight on the ground floor. So this plasma gun squad is not visible either to shoot or to be shot at. It's just one of our, or two of our house rules that we actually use for efficiency's sake because the GW terrain has different heights as well as the ground floors. It's very hard to actually have closed windows or doors. So it's just easier this way. Shooting for the Empress Children, and it wasn't a fantastic phase. We had the multi-melters shoot at the despoilers over here. We managed to hit one time and only wound one as well. And he managed to make his cover save, this lone guy who was protected behind the barrier, or the beautiful six to survive. Woohoo! So, yes. In the middle, the javelins decided to shoot at the destroyer squad here because it was probably the more pressing threat. We managed to kill a total of four guys. Sadly, that's not enough to cause a break check because there are 21 men in that unit. Including Apothecary, yep. Including the Apothecary. In the middle, we had the two Contemptors firing both of their Gravis Multi-Melters at this one Contemptor here. Even with Twin Linked, we managed to do no wounds whatsoever. We it was really one, bad. Yeah, very bad rolling there. It was kind of abysmal. Yep. And more success on this side. The missile launchers decided to just eat the bullet and they decided to shoot with their Master of Signals into the opposing heavy support squad. We killed five, including the sergeant there. And in return, we only lost two guys. So some poor rolling and some actually good saves from the Empress Children here. We did take a wound on the Master of Signals and we managed to tank all four of the wounds on the sergeant, so he is still alive. Yep. But these guys had to take a break check on the six, and luckily they passed. But there's a Vexilla in there as well, so they wouldn't have fled too far. Yep, and just a reminder for everybody, we do play the SNN Battle Reports rule about Artificer armor upgrades, so sergeants can only tank up to their initiative. But the Master of Signals can obviously tank as many as he wants, because he has a native two-up save. Um, Saying that he only tanked like three before he took a wound. He only took three before he took a wound, <laughs> but you were hot with your apothecary rolls. I think yes. you saved like three or four more guys. Exactly, yes. So luckily only two of the ten gone. We're still in within firepower, I think. So World Eaters turn one, kicking off movement. Obviously the heavy support squad had no need to move, so nothing there. Uh, the Red Hand Destroyers have moved up behind this ruin. I debated getting into the ruin, but I didn't want to take the dangerous terrain checks, and they still have plenty of charge distance and movement distance, thanks to my right of war. The Despoiler Squad here has obviously played very aggressive, and they've run up as far as they can, coming around the corner, preparing themselves for what comes next. This Contemptor also moved forward, attempting to bait out a reaction out of the Emperor's Children. Uh, no reaction was made, but thanks to the right of war as well as his movement 8, it's going to actually be only a 6-inch charge should I charge in the assault phase. His brother with the LAS cannons just repositioned a little bit to take some pot shots in just a moment with those, probably to whittle down uh, one of the contemptors. Recon squad, no need to move. They already know what their target is. The assault squad here moved up very aggressively. They did not run. It did trigger a reaction from the javelins. But that's actually my intended target, and thanks to the jump packs plus the right of war, I'm only five inches away from a charge in just a moment. The jet bikes here don't have a lot of good targets, thanks to night fight, so we just kind of came around the corner a little bit to draw a line of sight at the front contemptor. We didn't want to shoot at the javelins, probably, because in a return fire, we may actually just get insta-killed. The Spartan came around the corner here, ready to add its firepower against uh, more than likely javelins and possibly uh, some infantry over there. And then finally on my right flank, I had to think about this a little bit. It's not very world eatery, but if I was too aggressive with these guys, we were going to eat charges from Rylanor as well as the Phoenix Terminators. So I had to position myself just to kind of move forward, but stay out of potential threat range from uh, opposing charges. We're we'll back in just a moment with shooting. Shooting. 
Shooting phase for the World Eaters. We started with the Spartan to shoot into the Javelins. The idea was to soften them up a bit before the charge. The last cannons were actually really successful. We managed to score four hits and four wounds, and none of the intervening model saves were passed, so one Javelin went down. The Heavy Bolter was ineffectual. The Assault Squad in the front decided to add some pistols at the Javelins. We didn't actually score any wounds, so ineffectual there. The Snipers had a decision to make. Did they shoot at the Javelins or did they shoot at the Tax Squad? Now, I want to shoot at the Tax Squad, I think, because of scoring. We did actually roll really well. We killed three of the Emperor's Children Tax Squad, including the Sergeant, thanks to three Sniper Wrens. Uh, we did pin them as well, but they didn't break. Unfortunately, the Javelin did break. Nothing else shot at it, so when making his um, morale check, he did fail, and he's unfortunately fled out of now charge range for the Assault Squad, which could leave them sitting there with their pants down, um, but that's okay. The jet bikes, the Sky Hunters, came around the corner and decided to shoot at the front contemptor of the Emperor's children, but were completely ineffectual, scoring only four wounds, and all those were saved. The front contemptor over here fired his grabs in his fist. He managed to score one hit on both of the contemptors and wounded the front one only, the back one passed his invuln. There's some nasty grab dangerous terrain is there, no? There is, yes. Uh, the Laz Cannon Contemptor back here, he added his Laz Cannons to the tally as well, taking another two wounds off the front Contemptor. So we've got that front Contemptor halfway done. There was no shooting, obviously, out of the spoilers of the Red Hands because they either don't have line of sight or they ran. And then finally, the Volkite Culverns over here did not want to shoot at the missile launchers and take the return fire. So instead, they shot at the tax squad that still had some of its guys outside of the building. It was absolutely atrocious, and we only killed one guy with all that Volkite fire. Uh, we only hit with probably 50% of the hits, and we only wounded with about, I don't know, 60% of that. So all in all, very mediocre, I think, return fire from the uh, World Eaters. We did kill a Javelin, but that also left us hanging. We'll come back with an assault. There's only one that's actually going to be in effect. Assault phase for the World Eaters, and it was actually a little complex, even though we only had one. We had a combination of the World Eaters' Ride of War, plus the charge distance, minus the dangerous terrain of the Grav, blah, 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 blah. But I did roll high enough with my Contemptor to actually make the charge, but it was also a high enough roll where Rich had to roll very high if he wanted to use his advanced reaction. So because he would have had to have rolled like an 11 or a 12 to actually get the advanced reaction successfully off, um, I just did an overwatch. You just did an overwatch. Managed uh, to cause a wound, I think. Yeah, you did cause a wound, yeah. so that was pretty good. Um, the combat went, I think, my way. Yeah. You had five attacks, I think, because of... Six. Six attacks, and you managed to score three wounds, which doubled up to... No, two wounds, which doubled up to six wounds to save. For Brutal, yeah, for brutal, brutal three. And I had to say... I was already three wounds down, so I had to save at least three of them. I only managed to save two. So, uh, I actually, I had to save at least four of them, but still, I only managed to save two. On the resulting explosion, uh, nothing was damaged, but in response, I managed to hit once, and then for my two required, I rolled the beautiful one. So there was no saves at all needed by this world leader. Correct. So it was very, very successful for the Contemptor, managing to polish off his brother, his loyalist brother, and not take any damage in return. But yeah, we'll see what happens with the Emperor's Children in turn two. Turn two, for the Empress Children and the movement phase, we decided to start with the Plasma Gunners getting up onto the building from directly beneath. That caused a reaction from the Assault Squad here, who decided to move forwards to get some extra inches here. That move actually made a decision for me, so the Praetor with the Phoenix Terminators decided to come out. They moved five inches out to get outside of the terrain and within charging distance, or potential charging distance there. The Palantine Blades came into the building and ran to block the front there and also block some of the back to make it potentially harder for them to get a charge off or just get a number of models into combat if they don't die in the next shooting phase. Our Contemptor on the side decided to move forward and no reaction was made here and we tucked in the last bit of the tactical squad into cover because those Volkites would just plink them off in the subsequent turns. Finally, well actually, firstly, the Javelin did manage to rally, but since he rallies he can't move, so he just spun around to face forward, potentially taking some snapshots, 
and we decided to move our Sky Hunter Squadron into a position where they could do more damage than just shooting some infantry here. They're going to look at shooting at some of the opposing Sky Hunters here. They moved within 24, but outside of 12, so no reactions were possible from the world leaders. It's going to be a key shooting phase because there's a lot in our face and we need to whittle some of that down or this could be trouble for the Empress children. Shooting phase for the Empress children and as you can see that assault squad in the middle is no longer there. We shot absolutely everything we could at that. The missile launchers shot their frags and managed to kill four of them. Yep. The plasma squad rapid fired into them managed to do several wounds but no kills there were so many saves done by that squad yeah so the artificer tanked the first four and then i also tanked a lot of the three ups and then also spiked the uh, feel no pain so yeah. only four guys died and i lost one from overheating in return even though i did have like six overheats and i managed to save a lot of those but the javelin came into the rescue because they weren't going to flee yet but the snap shooting las cannons and twin linked multi melter managed to get the f last two wounds we needed off that squad. So they lost a total of six guys, but more importantly, they had to take a break check. And, yeah. yeah. Yep, they fled back. And the reason why I didn't use my advanced reaction is Rich cleverly placed his guys that were shooting where I would have a tough time actually getting my advanced reaction off, which is why I didn't react with that unit. Then our Sky Hunter squadron with the multi melters there shot at the opposing Sky Hunter squadron and you elected to return fire. I did because uh, all that Volkite, I was hoping to actually kill some of your bikes in return and get rid of those nasty multi melters. I did lose four of my guys, you rolled very hot. Uh, I did do some wounds back, a couple wounds here and there and killing one bike. Yeah, you kill the bike, you put a wound on the sergeant and then you put another wound on a remaining bike there from the deflagrate. Yep. So they are down to a four-man squad. Over on this side, the multi-melter managed to score one wound on your um, contemptor, but I still think it's going to be a tough fight in this, uh, in this battle here. And there was actually nothing left to shoot for the Empress Chosen. We're just going to have one charge because even though the Phoenix Terminators and the Praetor now were supposed to charge that unit, they are much too far away. And they've actually left themselves a bit open to these snipers in the next turn. And last cannons from the Spartan. I saw a face for the Empress Children and it was actually pretty exciting. I wish we kind of recorded these rolls. I managed to charge in and there was an overwatch. The two grabs caused two wounds on me, but no wounds on the shooting world leader's contemptor. I had four attacks. I managed to only hit one of my four. And since I strike first, he doesn't get a reply until after he takes his saves. I managed to cause one wound, giving a brutal three saves. Jason only had to pass one of those saves. But luckily for me and unluckily for him, he failed all three. Womp, 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 womp. You would think statistically I would have saved one, but no, alas, it was not to be. So successful victory there. We did take blasts in return, but I passed, well, no wounds on me. And he passed his save on the one to spoiler in the back. So now we'll move on to the world leader's turn. Kicking off turn two for the world eaters. The first thing actually was on my right flank. Uh, it's not very World Eaters, I know it, but if I move up, Rylanor gets a free charge. Uh, potentially other things can charge or shoot me and I really need to protect this objective. So unfortunately they moved backwards a little bit to also make it hard for Rylanor to charge them. The actual first thing in the phase is for the uh, fleeing assault squad to try and rally and it was good that they didn't, so they failed. They fled back 10, but they're still on the board, which was actually exactly what I wanted because then it freed up the Spartan to make different moves. I move back with the Spartan because if I move forward, I get off a guaranteed charge against something, but then in return, I either get charged by the Praetor and the Phoenix Terminators or the Palantine Blades. So discretion is the better part of valor and I wanna use LAS cannons to just instant kill uh, the opposing uh, Phoenix Terminators if I can. The lone remaining Sky Hunter moved over here to the left in range to go pick on the missile launchers to force Rich to either make a, uh, a decision or eat some uh, Volkite fire. 
The Red Hands and the Despoiler Squad here on the left flank played very aggressive. We're going to keep the pressure on. We moved as far forward as we can uh, without running. Uh, basically, we want to get right up into the face of the Emperor's Children to get off some charges in just a moment. The last cannon contemptor shuffled around a bit to be able to either shoot missile launchers or the plasma gunners. Unfortunately, because night fight is still in effect, I can't get um, close enough to the jet bikes or the Phoenix Terminators to pick on them. And then the recons and the Volkites just stayed in place. There's nowhere else for them to go. So we'll come back with shooting in just a minute. Shooting for the World Eaters was actually pretty poor. We started with the Spartan, who had lovely shots on the Phoenix Terminators and the Praetor. I hit and wounded three times, and Rich managed to pass two out of three five-up invulns. I only killed one of the Phoenix Terminators with the LAS cannons. I scored two more wounds, successful wounds with failed saves with the heavy bolter, but Rich played the character game and passed the wounds around, so there are two more <laughs> wounded uh, Phoenix Terminators there. The snipers elected to shoot at the plasma gunners, and it was abysmal. Uh, I think we didn't kill or hit anybody, so yeah, nothing there. You didn't. Didn't. Uh, the remaining Sky Hunter, trying to tease out a reaction, shot at the missile launcher squad. He scored a lot of hits, but he didn't do any wounds. The Rampagers shot at the Contemptor. Uh, also got a lot of hits, but didn't do any wounds. The Contemptor with last cannons fired at the missile launchers, again trying to tease out reactions. We did kill one guy from his shots. Uh, Rich did pass some uh, cover save, I think one cover save there. Yeah, the very top guy got taken off his perch. Yes. The Red Hands fired also at the missile launchers, and even though we managed to score a lot of hits, the tankiness of the Artificer armor and or the Feel No Pains actually stopped many casualties. Yeah. And then last was my heavy support squad with Volkites firing at the missile launchers. Uh, Rich elected to return fire. I only killed the Master of Signals because he was on one wound left. Yeah, I decided to start tanking a lot of these shots. I tanked the four on the sergeant successfully and started tanking the rest. I managed to only lose a wound against this one. I think it was like 11 or more. Yeah, it was yeah. crazy. You were passing either the Artificer or actually the Feel No Pains. And I lost three in return on the return fire, so now my heavy sports squad is down to two. Yeah, sadly no fleeing from re reactions. That would have been nice. Yes. Uh, we do have a couple charges because I must charge in my phase if I'm within 12 inches. We'll get back in just a minute with those charges. Assault phase for the World Eaters, and we started with the Despoilers, who basically, thanks to the right of war and being World Eaters and blah, 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 could not fail their charge, and they rolled a mighty 12. Yeah. Um, we did lose three guys from Overwatch on the way in. We didn't lose anybody from the dangerous terrain checks with the grab still down. In the combat, we only lost one from the Contemptor, and we did two wounds ourselves, which was actually pretty good, because that means that we just stick. Nobody flees, and we didn't lose. Mm -hmm. so that's good. And now let's talk about what happened with the Red Hands. So the Red Hands only needed a five to be able to get up to a spot where they could charge the missile launchers. They lost two from Overwatch, and I rolled double one on the charge. Yeah, so that was uh, not possible to get up there. And to be honest, it was kind of sweet for me. <laughs> it was very sweet for you. Um, yeah, so we had, uh, you know, the dice giveth in the uh, Contemptor fight, and the dice taketh away with the Red Hands. So we'll be back with turn three with the Emperor's Children in a moment, and Night Fight will be ending. Turn three for the Emperor's Children and for the movement, Rylanor has decided to come out because we need to get towards this onslaught objective that we placed on this corner here. And I think you decided to do a world leader thing, right, and flee? <laughs> well, you know, if I don't do that, then Rylanor with his charge bonus only needed like a six or a seven to charge me, and I want to be the one doing the charging. So yes, I pulled back. It's a strategic replacement. <laughs> yes, the world eater's bloodlust was tempered there. For us, our scoring unit needed to move here. So our scoring unit is moving forward. They ran their full distance of 11, staying outside of the difficult terrain. Inside, we moved our command squad Phoenix Terminators with their standard bearer and the Praetor because that is also a scoring unit because of that. They are, of course, trailing two wounds on two of the other Phoenix Terminators. We wanted to get out of line of sight of these nasty snipers who could choose to pick off whatever they liked, and I don't want to be losing that standard. Our plasma squad stayed put, but our sky hunters moved towards the other sky hunters here. Uh, we need to get some attrition points, so we're looking at seeing what we can polish off on the board. 
The Javelin also moved into range of the lovely destroyers over here, your special red hands, right? Yes, red hand destroyers. Yeah. And our tactical squads decided we are going to come out. We are looking to do some rapid fire uh, for this. And the Palantine Blades came out of their ruins because we want to get a charge off, even though some of them have had to remain inside. We have frag grenades. We can get the charge off successfully if we wanted to without losing too much. And this is already stuck in combat, so we only have a very short charge here. I did react, so when oh, your yes. Palantine Blades moved, I actually moved the Red Hands a bit further away. The thinking was is that I could stay further away from your Plasma Guns and avoid getting rapid fired. We'll come with the shooting phase next. Empress Children shooting and Rylanor unloaded his Kerry's assault cannon into these guys and they lost two, not enough to flee. And sadly, he doesn't have a bolter or anything useful in his fist. He only has a flamer. Don't know why they put this load out on this it, guy. It's the perfect, perfect yes. guard. Yeah, the perfect. <laughs> <laughs> they ran so they couldn't shoot. Our javelin over here decided to shoot at the red hands and with everything he had, he didn't score a single wound, rolling double ones for the Laz Cannon and double ones for the Melter. It was a lot of ones rolled there. The Plasma Squad, Tactical Support Squad, shot at the snipers and managed to kill one guy only. And we didn't take any wounds in return, luckily, but it was a close one. Then the decision was, what do we do with the Sky Hunters? Do we shoot at the snipers as well? We went for the attrition points. We killed off that one last rival Sky Hunter there. So we've got some space to maneuver here. And then we made a very big tactical error over here. I was under the assumption that they wouldn't be able to use their advanced reactions because I had put a screening unit in. But Jason correctly informed me that I had not placed them correctly enough where there was no room for them to be charged. So when I elected to fire rapid fire at them with the back tactical squad here, that lone tactical squad, they decided to turn on the advanced reaction. We did, so we get a charge off, and because of the right of war plus the jump packs, it's plus three to the roll, and I rolled a nine. So that 12 inch roll allowed me to actually get the advanced reaction off at the guys that shot me. Yes, but you did lose three in the shooting phase itself. Yep. We'll be back with the charge phase, and since this has already charged in, and there's nothing I can do there, I can look at this unit charging, and we might have to take the other tactical squad in just to support their poor brothers. Assault phase. We had to charge in our second tactical squad because we did need that initiative bonus that the Empress children have, and we managed to get a successful charge in and get everybody into engagement range. And from that, the initial trooper strikes from the normal tactical squad, managed to kill three of them, leaving two left, including the sergeant. My squad that was charged managed to kill one more with two dying in return from the same fight there. And then it came down to the power fist. But since my sergeant charged, I get plus one to my initiative on this initiative one weapon. So I was initiative two. I had three attacks. I hit with one and I needed to roll a two plus, and I did manage to kill him before that dangerous thunder hammer came into play. And that was a lucky and very, um, how should I say this, sigh of relief that the mistake I made in my own shooting phase didn't bite me in the ass too hard there. And then it came down to the Palantine Blades. The Palantine Blades managed to charge in, but not all were engaged. The champion plus two of the sphere, spears were too far away to be in engagement range, but the rest did what they normally do, and we slaughtered them with, I think it was 10 kills. 10 of my guys got yeah. killed. Uh, my fist sergeant actually managed to wound your contemptor twice, yeah. but you passed one of the invulns, otherwise he would have blew up. Yes, so he is on one wound left in a very precarious situation, but they did flee, and since he's using highest initiative, I did manage to catch you there. You did indeed. Uh, he needed snake eyes. He was very close. You rolled a one and a scatter dice. <laughs> yes, and then the scatter dice was replaced by a six, but uh, alas, it was not to be. So, yes, um, I think the dynamic has changed on this side of the board. 
turn three for the world eaters and we've got to play aggressive. Uh, so starting on this right hand side, the uh, despoilers finally decided to move forward and put themselves in a charge on Rylanor. The reason why we're finally doing this is we got to get rid of him because that is a big problem and there's a attack squad back there that can actually score. Uh, the assault squad at the beginning of the turn did rally and they went ahead and consolidated this way just a little bit, basically to kind of stay far away from the other emperor's children stuff, but then put themselves in a position to go charge perhaps in the next turn. The Spartan pivoted over here and the reason why is I need Rylanor to die and I want to maximize my last cannons on Rylanor. If I get my command squad out and go hunting up the middle, it kind of defeats the purpose because they are one of my remaining line units as well. The snipers don't need to move. Their target is pretty much set. The Contemptor over here came around the corner to add his last cannons because we're really hoping to pop Rylanor in this turn. And then finally, the last thing I got to play smart due to attrition, my last remaining heavy squad with the Volkites just disappeared into the building. He's basically playing keep away because I need to really whittle down the Emperor's children in order to have any chance of actually winning this game. I wanted to kill him. <laughs> so I wanted to kill him. <laughs> yeah, I know you did. That's why I'm hiding. Shooting for the World Eaters, and we opened up on everything we could on Rylanor. So we started with the Contemptor. He managed to score three hits and three wounds. Rylanor spiked two of his invulns and only took a single wound. Yeah, strong Rylanor. Next up was the Spartan, also unloading into Rylanor. Same thing, different story. So four hits, four wounds. Rylanor spiked two of his invulns. And then lastly, we also had the bolt pistols out of the despoiler squad here. Uh, I did manage to actually score a single wound with a bolt pistol. So, yeah. so I got three wounds left because Rylanor actually has seven wounds. That's correct. And then the last thing that shot was my four snipers elected to try and plink off the wounded sky hunters. We did score three hits. We did get three wounds, but un unfortunately no rends and no damage caused. And you did a return fire. I did return fire, but mine was also pretty ineffective. I scored two wounds and you saved both on your four plus uh, cover saves. Yep, so I think we might only have one assault in the next turn, uh, but I'm gonna debate it because there's some nasty Phoenix Terminators also in that building. So we'll see what happens in just a minute. Assault phase summary for the World Eaters, and as you can see on your screen, it probably didn't go as well as it should have. Uh, we charged in with the Despoilers. We lost one due to the Overwatch. We lost two more due to Rylanor's attacks. We rolled a mountain of attacks. 48, I think. It was 48 or something like this, plus the Power Fist. Power Fist Sergeant didn't hit anything. I only wounded a total of, I think, like three or four times. Rylanor, of course, made his saves, and then I got swept because mm -hmm. Rylanor killed two people, and thanks to Crusader and me rolling a one on the sweeping advance, this is the net result. Probably good that this happened because Angron wouldn't be happy with the way that they've played this game anyhow. So, <laughs> Unfortunate, though. Yeah, it happens. Um, so this is probably going to be game. We might check and see what might happen with a turn four. But the despoilers going down right there pretty much leaves that objective nearly completely open to the Emperor's children. And I'm just getting outpointed on attrition as well. But we'll, uh, we'll take a look at this in just a moment and make a decision if we have a turn four or not. Well, that's the game. We actually decide to call it the end of turn three just because of how it was panning out there. I was honestly surprised how much havoc my Empress Children caused into the World East Alliance. Uh, Angron is not pleased. <laughs> so we're going to call this uh, first army, first game, new dice. We're going to call it all that. But no, actually, it was probably Operator Air. It's my first time to actually play the World Eaters, and maybe I wasn't as aggressive as I needed to be. Yeah, you don't really play aggressive armies that often, as opposed to what you see on the channel with myself or Gene or, <laughs> or uh, Paul with these EC. We're more gung-ho about it. I think it um, takes a bit of getting used to. But also, I will say, your dice at times were atrocious. They were absolutely atrocious. Yeah. Uh, you know, 48 or 60 attacks and only wounding once or twice. I yeah. mean, that's how bad it was. But again, I'm not going to blame it on the dice. It had nothing to do with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm also trying to get my head around the world eaters. I'm sure I made some mistakes and, and things like this. And this is a playable force. But mm -hmm. the one thing is I'm not a big fan of Spartans. Yeah. Again, it's not an excuse. But I don't need a Spartan actually in this list because I don't have anything big enough to stick in it. I would rather actually trade the Spartan for two Land Raiders. And maybe that's going to be a future list. Yeah, I, I can't disagree with you there. I think if you did have a 10-man Terminator squad of some sort to go in there, it would have been good. But also, you're right, Spartans are very expensive. I don't really run any just because of that. Yeah. Um, I think I run two Land Raiders for my Dark Angels because they can fit two different squads inside as opposed to one there. Yep. 
But yes, I was, um, I actually enjoyed playing this because it was, like you said, a very fluffy list. It was nice to see some units that you don't normally see. And you did have these large blobs that when you deployed them at the very beginning, I was actually pretty intimidated by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're not running infantry heavy, are you really playing world eaters? <laughs> um, but I did try to add a little bit of flavor with the red hands. Unfortunately, the Red Hands models that I had assembled for this force are not optimized mm. with the Kadiri weapons and all these different kinds of things. Um, but I wanted to take them for fluff reasons. But yeah, that's a huge point sink as well. Yeah, so I, I'm i used to going with large point sinks. Uh, I did have my 10-man Palantine Blade Squad, which you see on the channel quite often. Yep. They weren't the Aquilas, so they were cheaper, but they're still pretty dear. Yes. And I was running the Phoenix Terminators as a command squad because I do like how they can take a standard Yes. and they make my Praetor scoring, which is fantastic. Yes, and you were running Rylanor as well, which is always the fluffy suboptimal choice. <laughs> yeah, I um, first time running Rylanor. We have the model and we've been running him as other things. Yep. It was, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm still undecided about him. He didn't really get much of a play, but he survived. He tanked that very last third round there where you honestly shot a lot and he should have died. Yes. I think he should have died there. Yep. But um, I don't like his loadout. I'm yeah, really not a fan of that. A heavy flamer in the fist is pretty bad, actually. I mean, again, fluff is fluff, and we're trying to bring you a fluffy list and all yeah. these different kinds of things, and fluff is uh, what he had in the book. Yeah. But heavy flamers are just Also, just worthless. in general, I think the, the carries now is suboptimal on yeah. a loadout for yep. a Contemptor. My other two Contemptors were both running... Gravis multi melters mm -hmm. uh, with sadly just combi bolters in the fist because I didn't have enough points to put something better in them. Yep. But yeah, still the I think it's a better weapon nowadays than the carries. Yeah. Uh, it is nice. He's got an extra wound, seven wounds, which did help a bit, I think. Yep. Uh, and then he's also got weapon skill six, which helps. Yes. But he lost a few, uh, he lost a few rules. I think he lost his living icon, which doesn't come into play all that often, but still helps get that plus one. A combat result mm. uh, in exchange for a crusader which actually came into play here well you did roll a one <laughs> i did i did roll a one i mean that was kind of the trend of this game of the spoilers you know whiffing basically and getting run down but again it is what it is it's a dice game and these things happen but it was yeah it was fun to play even if it didn't go the world eaters way we did try to bring you something with that is three flavor yeah so again i think it was just at the end of the day there at the end of turn three i'd killed off more or less everything you had that was scoring and I was in control of that right hand side pretty pretty strong. It's probably for the best because I think if we got back to the ships, Angron would have killed everybody anyhow for our <laughs> failure. So, uh, yes. But speaking of failure or maybe not failure, who was the least uh, bad for this uh, Angron force? Wow. So, you know, <laughs> in a world of different flavors of poo, <laughs> this would be the least pooey. <laughs> Uh, this would probably be my contemptor. So he did get off the charge and he did smash one of his brothers pretty well. Yeah. So that one was pretty nice. Uh, he did, unfortunately, have a whiff on the other, bro other brother. But he was responsible for the only full unit I killed in the Emperor's Children, which was a single contemptor. Yes, and it was part of the talent as well. So I don't know how that would have worked actually in the points. But yeah. yes, it's, uh, it wasn't, uh, didn't kill all that much. And he did, did come, not. He did die in return. For me... I'm going to actually say it was the one tactical squad with the power fist who managed to kill your red hands there because I made a tactical error and this was a lack of understanding of how the assault rules worked because I thought I was never going to get an assault with these guys. I was very aware that you can counter charge me in the shooting phase. So I had tried to screen, but apparently you can't do that when they have jump backs because they just jump past you. <laughs> well, you can screen. You had the right idea. The problem was that you left too big of a gap. Yeah. So if you had wanted to screen, you just would have had to place the second unit in a bit closer proximity to the first, and then there's no way for me to actually make contact, but you left me a gap big enough to get there. Yeah. Also, I think you rolled a 12, so you would have easily jumped over. Charge bonus and yeah, everything exactly. else for the World Eaters. Yep. That is the one thing I'll say about the World Eaters. I've never seen a charge bonus as large as that. Is that your right of war, I think, right? Yeah, the right of war gives you plus two to charges, and then, of course, if you have things like contemptors of movement eight or jump packs then you get actually another bonus on top of that yeah. so yes this right of war can be in your face very quick plus three to charges is huge it's uh it's really big it's, uh, and plus two to runs oh plus two to runs at least they can't shoot and charge like the space wolves <laughs> yeah right that would be totally op <laughs> but no so guys i hope you enjoyed our latest battle report here in 30 minutes we try and mix things up with the 30 minute reports of the full games we 
like rolling dice, but I don't think you needed to see every single dice rolls. There was a lot of just redundant dice rolling in, in general. A lot of really bad redundant yeah. dice rolling. <laughs> and we do try and highlight some of the ones that were pretty bad, like your twos on your Double ones there. on a charge. Yeah. yeah, it was ugly. Yeah, it could have been different. I think it would have been different on that side of the table if you got the charge off in the turn you went to. Yeah, maybe. Yep. Because I would have been stuck multiple turns just eating through one by one uh, that unit there. Yep. Um, but sadly, they didn't get it, and it was lucky enough for the Empress Children. We held out another day uh, in the ruins of Istvan. We'll be back later on in the year to see how they go. Maybe Salt Harvest will make an appearance. <laughs> and yes, and maybe we'll have some different units for the World Eaters as well. Um, it, I stayed up all night. <laughs> and thank you, babe, to my wife for also helping me put uh, the bases together. Um, but yes, we wanted to get something playable for you. The army's not fully done, but it is pretty close. And yeah, it gives us another uh, quiver or another arrow in the quiver in terms of legions that we can bring to the channel. Yeah. So look, if you stay this long, thanks for tuning in. Let us know in the comments if you uh, have anything to say about the battle itself. If you prefer the longer reports, let us know as well. If you're really happy with these 30 minutes, do give us a thumbs up and hit the bell notification icon. The thumbs up helps us with the algorithm. We're trying to grow. Things yes. are pretty slow in the wargaming community at the moment, yes. but it's getting better and better. And we will be bringing you, like I said, more battle reports in the future. We may have a bit of a hiatus for the next couple of weeks just because we're trying to build a few more forces to stop bringing the same repetitive things over and over again. Yes. And also some new terrain we're trying to bring in. <laughs> and also some work from personal travel and different things like this. But yeah, stay tuned because don't worry, we're still going to have content every week. We just may not have a battle report over yeah. the next two to three weeks. Okay. Well, look, thanks for tuning in. From me, Richard, we'll see you next time. And we'll catch you on the next one.